Now let's get to the Europa Conference final which will take place in Athens tomorrow. Olympiakos will take on Fiorentina. We can speak now to Greek football journalist Kostas Lianos who joins us live from Athens. Kostas, good afternoon to you. It is Olympiakos' first major European final. How much excitement is there in the country about this game? Well, hello everybody. Well, uh, the entire city is holding its breath. It has been uh, extremely difficult to find a ticket. Uh, only 9,000 tickets for each team and then 3,000 tickets for fans worldwide uh, to come and see this game, uh, which were given out uh, via draw. Uh, it is an absolutely unprecedented uh, time in Greece. Olympiakos, as Gate 7 International have proven, they have fans all over the world, over 100 countries around the world, every continent in the world, bar Antarctica. Lots of people coming from very far away to watch this game. It is, like I said, a completely unprecedented time here in Greece. Very, very strict security measures are in place in Athens, uh, so much so that fans have been advised not to take a car, instead use a uh, public transport course. There's going to be a lot of traffic, no, no parking space. Uh, there's going to be traffic wardens everywhere. There's going to be over 3,000 police officers deployed for this game. And measures are so strict that even schools within the Nea Philadelphia area around the Opapa Arena Stadium, schools will be closed. Just talk to us a little bit then about this Olympiakos site and the manager in particular, because he's transformed this team in a relatively short period of time. Can you just put into some context what an achievement it would be if he won the tournament with them? Well, uh, it, 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 it would be something very unique, in my opinion. Jose Luis Mendilibar came over in February during a really, really difficult time for Olympiacos. Uh, Olympiacos seemed destined for fourth place in Greece. Uh, nobody was thinking about anything uh, in Europe. Uh, a lot of people thought it was too much that Olympiacos managed to make it to the Europa Conference League playoff stages. Uh, and then Jose Luis Mendilibar, with just three months in charge, have completely turned a team uh, that uh, seem destined for fourth place in Greece into European champions elect in the in the eyes of many different people and has already made history. He's done something that some notable predecessors like Ernesto Valverde, like Marco Silva, were never able uh, to do. Uh, if if Medilibar wins the European title, I think this is going to be a very unique situation because I cannot remember a precedent. I cannot remember anyone else being able to do such a thing before him, especially with a, a club like Olympiacos, a non-top five league club like Olympiacos. And uh, like I said, if he actually wins the European title, he's already making a, a really strong case to go down in history as this club's greatest ever manager in 100 years, even though he's been with the team only three months and hasn't won the title. And what about some of the players then? Because a lot of us over here are familiar with Daniel Pedenz, of course, on loan from Wolves. Uh, is it fair to say he's Olympiacos' he's star player? How good has he been this season? Well, not only has he been Olympiacos' star player, he's been Greece, the Gr Greek football's uh, star player. An incredible season by uh, Daniel Pedenz. 15 goals and 13 assists in 46 games across all competitions. He has been absolutely massive uh, down the left wing, very important for Olympiacos. He closed the season with uh, a goal of the season contender against rivals Panathinaikos in a very hostile stadium with a lovely uh, lob over the, uh, the goalkeeper. Uh, he has been absolutely massive in Olympiacos' revival under José Luis Medilibar, who he brought his philosophy. Uh, he brought the, 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 the Basque mentality that really works with Olympiacos, as proven by Ernesto Valverde, who was the one that basically turned Olympiacos into a European club in the first place upon his arrival in 2008, way back when. Uh, and, uh, well, now with Daniel Podence, he is on loan uh, from Wolves. Uh, and un our understanding is that he, my sources are telling me that uh, Wolves are not planning to keep him. Uh, and uh, uh, and the, the fans are asking for him to absolutely stay. Uh, and he's definitely going to play a massive role in this final. He must, because if uh, he doesn't shine for Olympiacos, then Olympiacos are going, to, um, are going to have an issue against Fiorentina. And there will be an Englishman playing in the final. Just tell us about Omar Richards and the role that he's played in getting them to the final. Well, Omar Richards uh, joined uh, Olympiacos during a difficult time in his career after uh, 
uh, uh, a litany of injuries uh, during his first season at Nottingham Forest where he didn't play uh, a single game. Uh, he suffered an injury on his shin upon his arrival, uh, had to remove a metal pin, and then he had issues with his groin. Upon joining Olympiacos, he still wasn't 100%, but Olympiacos gave him the time and the trust uh, to come back. Uh, he has mostly been playing behind Francisco Ortega, the starting left back, but at his best, Omar Richards has proven to many that he is Olympiacos' best fullback. Uh, he, he only made 15 appearances, but those 15 appearances were very, very impressive. Uh, he's absolutely shown strong signs that upon his return to Nottingham Forest, he can, be, uh, he can, play, he can become a major player for Nuno Espirito Santo, uh, the manager. And now we're waiting to see if he's going to start in the final because Francisco Ortega has not played at all since his injury against Aston Villa in the first leg at Villa Park. Uh, so Jose Luis Mendilibar is dealing with a dilemma right now. Do I start Ortega, who uh, has been inactive for almost three weeks, or do I go with Richards, who has played uh, most of my matches uh, down that flank? Uh, but, but I think that even if the game does go to extra time, uh, we are we, there's high chances that we are going to see Richards coming on. It, it is huge for him as he is the third Englishman to be playing in a European competition this season after Jude Bellingham and Jaden Sancho. And what about the final itself then? Because Fiorentina reaching the final for the second season running, do you think that experience might give them the edge? Well, absolutely. Fiorentina are coming with the experience. They they have played in every single European final uh, of, of every European competition in the history uh, of football. They even won the European Cup's Winner Cup. Uh, they were in the final of the Europa Conference League last season. Funnily enough, uh, in all three years of Europa Conference League, this is the third straight season we have an Italian team in the final. They're absolutely coming with the uh, with the experience. Uh, but my understanding is that Olympiacos uh, have a lot of belief. Uh, there's a lot of confidence going into this. Uh, under this manager, under José Luis Mendilibar, and so many talented players like Ayub El Kabi, the, the competition's top scorer, uh, Chiquinho, Santiago Eze in midfield, Andre Orta as well in midfield, David Carmo, the rock in defense, Daniel Podence on the wing, the captain, Costas Fortunis, uh, on the other side. They are not going to underestimate Fiorentina, and they're just going to continue playing their game. They're just going to continue playing with the high press, which they insisted on against Aston Villa, even after a uh, convincing victory at Villa Park. They refused to park the, the bus uh, in the uh, second leg. So they're going to continue playing their game, and Fiorentina have had issues uh, with the press, as they do leave, um, do leave spaces behind. Uh, so I, I, I expect uh, I expect Olympiacos to play their game, but they're going to need the trio in midfield: Chiquinho, Eze. Uh, uh, they're going to need Chiquinho and Eze and Orta if he starts, if not Vicente Bora, to be 100% on this one, or else Olympiacos are going to have a serious problem.